Hello students, welcome to this class of BA part first. I am Dr. S.S. Vedwan, Department of English, Arts College, Alva. And today, we will discuss another important sonnet by William Shakespeare. And the title of the sonnet is The Marriage of True Minds. In this particular sonnet, that is sonnet number 116 Shakespeare he shows he depicts the union the and the constancy and he says he celebrates that love is immortal and the lovers they should be constant to each other he says that true love is that which cannot be destroyed by time and it never change. True love is permanent. And he also says that there are no impediments in the course of true love. He doesn't admit any impediments in the course of true love. The marriage of true minds means the union of true minds constancy. Now Shakespeare he says that love which changes when some opportunity of change comes is not true love. He compares true love with the pole star and the lighthouse both signify both signify constancy both signify permanency. Now, let us come to analyze this particular sonnet, The Marriage of True Minds, in which Shakespeare celebrates the immortality of love and how obstructions, hindrances, they can never overcome true love. So, let us discuss the sonnet. Let me note, to the marriage of true minds, admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever ending, it is an ever fixed mark, that is, the pole star lighthouse that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star, it is the star to every wandering bark. Bark here is the ship whose worth is unknown, although his height be taken. Love is no time's fool. Yeah? Time again is personified. Love is not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks. Within his bending sickle's compass come. Look at the beautiful imagery. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ nor no man ever loved. Now, in the final concluding couplet, Shakespeare, he challenges, he challenges the whole world that if somebody can prove what he has written is erroneous, he says, I will quit writing and no man will ever love. So, this beautiful sonnet, it has the metaphor of lighthouse and pole star and true love again as Shakespeare says is immortal, eternal and in a way we can say that in this particular sonnet, The Marriage of True Minds, Shakespeare has presented a true definition of love. Let us further analyze the sonnet. The poet 
he says that true love remains firm and permanent even in all circumstances it remains unaffected by time time that has the power to decay and destroy each and everything its value can never be known the value of true love can never be known it is not disturbed by worldly hurdles any impediments it is not disturbed by the worldly hindrances and hurdles the poet he gives the image of a lighthouse and a pole star in order to show permanence and eternity of true love he also presents the image of a wandering bark that is a ship in order to describe misled lovers who find their true path by the guiding pole star the lighthouse according to shakespeare the love which remains firm as a pole star and a lighthouse in all the circumstances is true love it is not affected by the change of time or season shakespeare he says that la the love doesn't change with hours days and months and years doesn't change with the time which are the fragments of time all these hours days minutes months and years they are the fragments of time but true love remains constant till the day of judgment if we further look in this sonnet he says that true love is if the true love is proved wrong he will stop writing poetry and then he says that he will say that there have never been true lovers in the world in the final concluding couplet so again like a typical shakespearean sonnet he presents the situation in the three quatrains and he gives a solution in the concluding couplet let us further analyze this sonnet shakespeare says in two of in this sonnet the marriage of true minds or let me note to the marriage of true minds it is addressed neither to the young man or to the black lady it is unique in its theme and the way of its presentation as you might have noted when we read it it is a unique presentation the poet here deals with the universality permanence and eternity of true and sincere love in this sonnet the poet describes the nature of true love and that is why it has been given another title that is true love as it deals with the universal theme of true love and sincere love the poet he describes the firmness of true love that is friendship according to shakespeare true love can never be resisted though many impediments hindrances obstructions will come to its way but it will resist them all and true love is never hindered according to shakespeare love which remains firm in all the circumstances is true the poet further says he refers to the universal passion of spiritual love and not to the physical and sexual desires sexual type of attachment he show he says is sure to lose its charm with the decay of physical beauty the course of true love doesn't run smooth it is full of obstacles impediments and hurdles the poet says in the very beginning with the starting of sonnet let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments he says that i am ready to accept that there are impediments in the path of true love the poet believes that all these obstacles cannot prevent the happy union of true lovers further the poet says that love that yields itself to these hurdles is not true love it is merely lust for the satisfaction of physical desires true love never bend to hindrances it never alters even though 
it may find such situations but it stands firm and constant like a pole star like a lighthouse which is never disturbed from its place in spite of tempests and it also guides the vessels to ports that is the lovers who are misled it guides them to have true love he says and i quote oh no it is an ever fixed mark true love is an ever fixed mark that looks out tempests that looks on tempests and is never shaken it is the star to every wandering bark is it shows the right path to all the wandering barks that is the vessels the poet in these lines draws a comparison with the metaphor of pole star he compares true friendship that is true love to an ever fixed mark that is like a pole star the sea storms and the tempest they fail to inflict any harm to the lighthouse over to the pole star likewise true love cannot be shaken by the difficulties of life true love prevents us from wandering away to wrong and to wandering away to wrong paths it acts as a guiding force and gives a spiritual benefit to those who are true friends true lovers further the poet says that true love doesn't perish it is immortal as compared to the physical beauty the physical beauty he says that time will reap its crop he says physical beauty rosy lips and cheeks they will be rooted out by the time it will decay with the passage of time and physical beauty is short lived the poet personifies time here and he gives it the attributes of a sickle i quote love is not time's fool though rosy lips and cheeks within its bending sickles come pass come he says that time will reap its crop of physical beauty and the rosy lips and cheeks that is the physical beauty it will perish it will decay with the passage of time but true love constancy will never perish the poet says that time easily cuts the crop of physical beauty it reaps the crop of physical beauty but is unable to destroy true love like physical beauty true love doesn't change with the advancement of time with the passage of time it is always constant that is true love is always constant finally the poet in the concluding couplet he challenged the critics saying that if anyone can refute what he has said if anyone can deny what he has said he will never write again and he will accept that no man has ever loved truly in this world he is ready to accept that this challenge confirms shakespeare's faith in the immortality of true love in the immortality of love shakespeare has divided his sonnet again as i said in the very beginning into the three quatrains in which he presents the situation the problem and a final concluding couplet in which he presents to us the solution the rhyme scheme is a b a b c d c d e f e f g g regarding the form of uh, this shakespearean sonnet we can say that the first 14 lines that the first 14 lines they build up the theme develop it and bring it to conclusion and the couplet it presents the solution dear students i hope you have understood the sonnet the marriage of true minds we will continue with the next poem
prescribed in your course thank you very much